disease is a consequence of a simple strep infection if left untreated and it can attack the valves of children's hearts. Currently there are 15 million people worldwide who have this condition with over 200,000 each year dying from it. And yet we're dealing with a completely treatable condition. If children can be identified and treated all of the long-term problems can be completely avoided. That is what Rheumatic Rescue is all about. When we talk about Rheumatic Rescue, the name of our program, you know, the question is, is what are we really rescuing kids from? And um, we're rescuing kids from being tired and being fatigued, being short of breath, their hearts failing, and eventually preventing even death. For young women who contract rheumatic heart disease, they're not able to have children. If they do, they're at a very, very high risk of dying during childbirth. So this disease has not only uh, medical, but it also has great uh, psychological, social, financial, many, many ramifications which are devastating to a country like Samoa. Rheumatic fever is such a, a common disease in our children and it's, it has been quite difficult trying to uh, get these kids to come in early and Rheumatic Rescue has given us tremendous help in trying to uh, screen these children, school children, so that we can um, identify them early and start treatment early um, to prevent as you know, the complications such as rheumatic heart disease. Rheumatic Rescue is a unique and dynamic program that has been developed to educate populations who are dealing with rheumatic heart disease, to identify children who may have rheumatic heart disease, and then to look for new ways to prevent and or treat rheumatic heart disease. For our screening protocol, we bring each of the children in, we collect their very basic uh, information, we assign them a unique identifier number, and then we do what we call a rapid initial assessment, where we have an echocardiogram and we take a very quick look at the heart and basically make a determination if it's normal or abnormal. If it's normal, we reassure the children and their families, they go back to class. If it's abnormal, then we send them for a more comprehensive exam. As part of that, we get their height, we get their weight, uh, we get more information from them and we do an ultrasound looking at the valves in a much more aggressive manner. We're able to uh, look to see the amount of regurgitation which means leakage of the valves. We look to see if the valves are thickened, if they have limited mobility and we look at both the aortic valve as well as the mitral valve, the ones that are two most commonly affected by rheumatic heart disease. Our purpose is to identify them at an early stage, get them to penicillin treatment, and prevent the downstream problems with failing hearts, failing valves, and death and surgery in these children. For the educational component, we are able to use university students who are either enrolled in the nursing or community and public health programs. So these students are not yet certified clinicians, and so this is the perfect opportunity, opportunity for them to see a great clinical program along with health promotion. And they enroll in the class and we prepare them a full semester prior to arriving in country. 
and they learned that they they learned everything that, about rheumatic heart disease program planning and development the the clinical aspects and then they learned the actual educational uh, features that we offer to the children and the parents and as they do this they not only learn learn them and memorize them but they learn them in the Samoan language and it's amazing seeing a uh, uh, the team who come in who don't know the language and they 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 talk to the kids in Samoan and actually present this educational uh, part of the program in Samoan it's such a good thing it's just such a good feeling because they also learn our language and, uh, and our culture We, in our own way, have redefined primary preventive care. We've gone right to the child. So we teach them, the children, in a way that the children can be taught to tell your parents or someone when you have a sore throat. I think one of the strengths of the Rheumatic Rescue Program is it includes, as team members, people in the National Health Services here in Samoa. And it's exciting to see them learn the screening techniques, to see them engage with the parents, to teach them. And not only does it give them the skills, but it helps their own people identify them as their source for assistance. And not necessarily the rheumatic rescue team, but we're there as a support, and they see that as well. Rheumatic rescue began in 2009 and in 2011, they were able to partner with Utah Valley University and take their first group of students. At that time, there were eight students. This year, in 2015, they took more than 20 students. Although we provide a, a good service to the people that we serve in Samoa, we've now evolved into a major research program. Rheumatic Rescue is now expanding our research, looking at novel ways to prevent and or treat rheumatic heart disease. So the rate of rheumatic heart disease in Samoa is elevated relative to other developing countries. And this is likely due to the unique genetic architecture of the Samoan people. DNA can be collected from any tissue from an individual. For our purposes, it's simple and cost effective to collect DNA from saliva. We take that saliva back home, we treat it with a series of chemicals, and we extract pure DNA from that saliva. That DNA is then used for the downstream genetic work uh, that we're doing to try to prevent and cure this disease. Rheumatic Rescue's approach continues to evolve and expand in novel ways. In 2015, we began to explore innovative strategies to treat and even possibly prevent rheumatic heart disease. The rationale for our work in Samoa is first on a humanitarian basis. We're interested in being able to treat and possibly prevent some of the issues associated with infectious disease. But we were very interested to spend time in Samoa uh, looking at the, the uh, incidence of impetigo. And then we've also done some sampling in, in a couple of schools down there looking to see if there's group A strep in the environment and we found group A strep on the mats on which these children sit during the day in school and this may be a venue for transmission from one student to another. So this then leads us to opportunities to treat impetigo aggressively and also to work on eliminating reservoirs of group A strep in environments common to these children. Although this new partnership with Dr. Savage and the associated research will take time, the potential outcomes are extraordinary. So we're working with a disease that affects children that we know can be prevented. This is something that is more than just a typical humanitarian project. We don't know where we could have um, gotten this, you know, help to, to uh, save our children, basically. Our hope is that we can change the lives of the children as well as the people in country 
and that we can contribute through our research and through our um, genetics and find a cure to alleviate the burdens associated with rheumatic heart disease worldwide, that these children can have a brighter future. I believe this is something that we've been guided to do and I believe that there's great things that are going to come of this greater than we'll ever know and I'm just grateful to be part of it. You know Rheumatic Rescue is a successful program because it's hard to differentiate between who is helping whom. And when you can't tell that difference, you know you have a successful program.